Hi guys, Harry here, welcome to the process. So today we're going to be trying some copper electroplating onto these very nice Australian 5 cent pieces. We're going to be moving the copper from this electrode that I've got here in the water onto the nickel plating of the 5 cent piece. Let's get started. Alright, so to get this done we're going to use copper sulphate as the electrolyte which will provide the copper two ions to transfer the copper from the anode to the cathode which will be this nice 5 cent piece. Get it out. So that'll be around 15 grams, something like that. Now to mix it in, you'd ideally want a glass stir rod, but Stainless steel spoon works pretty well. You don't want to use any other metals, other than copper of course, because they will actually react with it and form copper on the surface. Alright, nearly done. If it doesn't all dissolve, that's alright, it'll still work either way. You can see the solutions turned a nice blue colour, indicating the presence of copper ions. So now we'll connect up the power leads. Positive should go to 5 volts that I've got here, a little PC power supply, and the negative should go to the thing that you want to plate, in this case the 5 cent coin. All right. Let's start it up and slowly dip the coin in. So you can see I've just got it half in right now to compare the copper with uh, the nickel that's left on the coin. Just leave it for a few seconds and then let's have a look now. So you can probably, probably can't see there but we've got, we're starting to get a thin coating of copper on the bottom half. It works better if you put the coin right in near the other electrode and move it around to stop crystals from forming because they do tend to form quite quickly when you have the electrodes close. You can see I'm also plating the alligator clip but that shouldn't matter. Alright, so what's going on here is that the copper sulphate as an electrolyte allows for the copper to dissolve off the anode, this red wire, into solution. This forms copper two ions and can then move across to the cathode where in a reduction reaction they will become copper metal. Alright, so here you can clearly see the copper as it's formed on the 5 cent piece. Uh, this isn't permanently bonded though, this is kind of just flakes off when you rub it with a cloth. Still does leave behind a nice layer of copper though. Though it's best to put it back into the solution and do it once again to get a nice thick coating that'll stay on for a long time. Alright this is going in for the second time to get a little bit more copper. As soon as I rubbed it off it kind of flaked in some areas so I'm gonna have to do it maybe two or three more times. Alright, so I've left it in there for a couple more minutes and you can see we've got that nice orange copper colour. Let's wipe it off with this rag and you can see that the copper colour has stayed on the coin quite nicely. Alright, so here you can really see the difference between the orange colour of the copper layer and the nickel layer on the regular 5 cent piece. Of course you could copper plate almost anything metal. Some metals of course will work better than others. Uh, this is due to similar reactivity. Metals will plate on each other really well, whereas metals that are different in reactivity will not plate very well. Uh, if you have a go at this, just remember to shake the thing that you're plating next to the anode 
keep them nice and close and use a kind of high concentration of copper sulfate. Alright, I'd say this is a pretty successful experiment. Good luck if you try it yourself.